This week's royal related moments had some members of the family postponing their events, puzzling headlines, and more royal portraits. Let's take a look at all things royal related from the week. Now that Charles has been cleared to do more public facing engagements, he and Camilla visited the Chelsea Garden Show and toured the gardens. And that is the entirety of the story. There is really not much else to say about this event. We saw William this week hosting a garden party at Buckingham Palace, and he invited guests that are involved in some of his projects, such as Homewards, to recognize their public service. The only other working royals in attendance were the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, but they weren't the only other royals in attendance. Without Kate attending the event, Kensington Palace was at least aware enough to realize that William would look noticeably alone at the garden party, especially in comparison to Harry's last event in the UK, when the Spencer cousins showed up to support him. So William invited his cousins as well, with Mike and Zara Tendall, Eugenie and Beatrice, and Peter Phillips all supporting the garden party. But the cousins weren't enough to save this event from looking like a washout. And if we thought we've had enough symbolism surrounding the royal family lately with bloody horses running through the streets of London and Charles's official portrait depicting him in what looks like eternal flames, we can't ignore the literal damper that was put on this day as rain poured down on Prince William and his guests. And Kate's absence from the garden party came at a time when online questions are resurfacing as to her safety and whereabouts. The hashtag where is Kate began making the rounds on social media again as many expressed concerns once more for her not being credibly seen, aside from a video shot in a BBC studio since Christmas 2023. And as the rumblings of concern for Kate got traction again, Kensington Palace shared an update, which is a journalistic way of saying gave a story to the press, saying that Kate was the driving force behind a new report related to her early years project. The report suggests that investing in early childhood could generate billions for the economy. While Kensington Palace stressed through the tabloids that Kate was the driving force behind this, they also stressed that this is not a return to work, and she would not be doing so until she gets the green light from her doctor. So essentially, the team produced this report, and Kate read it. So why did this get so much coverage in the UK tabloids? Well, it's a way for Kensington Palace to try and say, nothing to see here, everything's fine, without actually providing any proof that everything is fine. And I don't know if they remember, but the last time they tried to assure us that everything was fine, the Associated Press compared them to North Korea. But lucky for them, people were not thinking about that moment as they had a new portrait of Kate to discuss this week. Tatler Magazine unveiled a new painting of Kate on the cover of their July issue. The painting, created by British Zambian artist Hannah Uzor, shows Kate dressed as she was at the first state banquet after Charles took the throne in 2022. Tatler refers to this piece as a portrait of strength and dignity, and Uzor says she used different photographs of Kate to create the painting. Uzor also said that her paintings are made up of layers of a personality, constructed from everything she can find about her subject. Of Kate, Uzor said, I sense with her the joy of motherhood. And that is an accurate description of what we know about Kate, right? Or at least the image that has been presented of her. Kate is a mother. That is an acceptable thing for a royal wife to be, so that is what is emphasized about her over and over again, with any other distinguishable parts of her personality sufficiently hidden. Even her early years project that has been labeled her life's work is essentially about motherhood. And perhaps this lack of identifying characteristics about Kate is what led to this portrait and the wider reaction being, that doesn't look like Kate at all. Some have even made the comment that if Kate wasn't wearing the dress, the crown, and the sash, all the things we know she has worn to royal events, they wouldn't have even known this was her. So maybe Uzor did perfectly capture Kate's essence with this unrecognizable portrait. Because without the royal attachments, who even is she? It sounds like Kate will have plenty of time to figure out the answer to that question, though, as the Daily Beast published this article today by Tom Sykes, titled, Kate Middleton May Not Appear in Public for the Rest of the Year. The article says that Kate is being surrounded by her birth family as she undergoes preventive chemotherapy and that her diary is empty for the year. And I am torn between thinking that once again, Kensington Palace is terrible at handling this situation, or maybe... This headline is so terribly and ominously worded on purpose to generate conversation about Kate 
because that is the only way that this family is interesting. Either way, there's something more going on here. Which makes it incredibly convenient timing that the royal family said this week after Rishi Sunak's surprise announcement that a general election will be held on July 4th, that they will be postponing engagements that may appear to divert attention or distract from the election campaign, as they continue to insist that they are politically neutral. A few events will still happen, like Charles's attendance at the D-Day commemoration, and I would guess that we will probably still see Trooping the Color. Oh, and football. William is still going to watch football, because that is just too important for him to miss. Unless women are playing, of course. And I have to be honest, from the outside, this looks like just another excuse for them to do less work. So for my UK listeners, is this standard? Did Queen Elizabeth postpone engagements during general elections? And also, if the work that the royals do is so important, why not continue to do the work, visit the charities, without the press coverage? If the work is meaningless or not worth it, if they don't end up on the front page of the tabloids, doesn't that really mean that what they call work is in fact just PR for themselves and not about the organizations at all? It certainly reinforces Harry's point that other members of his family are deeply in bed with the tabloids, and we saw that as well in a ruling that was released this week on one of Harry's court cases, as part of the argument from NGN could have only been made with a little help from the palace. Judge Fancourt ruled this week on Prince Harry's request to amend claims in his case against Newsgroup News. In March of this year, through his barrister, Harry applied to amend his lawsuit to include Rupert Murdoch and Pierce Morgan specifically, with articles dating back to 1994, using what Harry says was information obtained illegally through hacked phone calls, some when he was as young as 10. Harry also requested to add claims from 2016 when the son allegedly paid a private investigator to obtain Meghan's phone records, her social security number, her address, phone number, and those of her friends and family. The current case only includes articles from 1996 to 2011. Newsgroup News argued against the amendment, saying Harry knew about the illegal information gathered on Meghan in 2016 because he'd had conversations with palace lawyers about it. And we have to wonder how exactly NGN would know what conversations Harry had with palace lawyers in 2016 unless someone from the palace told them. Judge Fancourt ruled in favor of NGN and said Harry is not able to extend the years of coverage. The judge did, however, grant some of Harry's amendments, specifically ones to alter his claims to include allegations that NGN bugged his landline phones and to include accusations against more journalists and private investigators during the allowed time period. Harry and his 40 co-claimants are also able to amend their case to bring more details of alleged lies by NGN to a public inquiry, Levison, and to claim that the journalist destroyed evidence proving that illegal information gathering had occurred. In his ruling, Judge Fancourt said that both sides had won, and about half of their disputes had been granted. The case is still set to go to trial in January of 2025. But what may be more interesting than which amendments Harry was or wasn't granted is the Washington Post seemingly trying to cover it up. According to an article in Semaphore, the Washington Post newsletter chief, Elena Zak, sent an email to staff the night the story came out with the subject line, Don't Distribute This Story, referring to the latest developments in Harry's case. The Washington Post new CEO, Will Lewis, is named in the case as he was formerly a News Corps executive. The case argues that Lewis was involved in a plan to delete emails regarding phone hacking. This is a story you want to keep your eye on. In other Harry and Meghan related news, this portrait, taken by photographer Miss Sam Harriman, was selected to be displayed in the permanent collection of the National Portrait Gallery. The image was taken at One Young World in September of 2022, just a few moments before Harry and Meghan took the stage and just a few days before the death of Queen Elizabeth II. And this photograph shows what it actually means to capture the essence of a subject. Harry and Meghan stand side by side next to one another as a team, holding hands with looks of confidence or maybe determination on their faces, perfectly capturing what looks like from the outside their unbreakable bond and both their individual and combined strength. That strength is further amplified by the use of light in this image. In the photo, the shadows, the darkness, all fall behind them. And not only are they looking toward the light, but the light seems to reach back to them as well, highlighting their expressions, their joined hands, and perhaps their greater path of leaving the darkness behind them and focusing on where there is light.